Hello everyone. Welcome to Physiotherapy in Lesotho. www.physioinlesotho.ch. You are listening to a podcast from one of our physio workshop in Lesotho. Your speaker is Ndade Tuso, W Fasa, a qualified physiotherapist. So let us start with an introductory lecture to physiotherapy. What is physio? How is a physiotherapist trained? Where are physiotherapists working? How do they work? What is the tool of physiotherapy? Let's go into this topic to have a basic idea about physiotherapists and physiotherapy assistants. In a very simple way, I could define physiotherapy is the art and science of helping a patient with physical means. Let's write down this definition. Physiotherapy, or we just call it physio, is the art and science to help a patient with physical means. So if I say it's art and science, that means it's really an art to do physio. We have to learn it with the hands, we have to practice it, we have to exercise it, that mm -hmm. our hands can do it. It's really an art, we have to study that and to learn. It's not enough when we know how physio is done. We have to practice it with the hands, the procedures, to become an art, that we really know it. You know, maybe a carpenter, he goes to school, learns to work with the wood, making a good chair or maybe a bed or a table. By time, that chap will know it exactly. He knows the wood exactly. He knows his instruments, how to work with the wood. And then he becomes really sharp in his carpentry. So he has learned the art of this, this technology of doing that. It's the same in physio. We have to practice physio. We have really to learn the procedures with our hands, our body. We have to experience them on ourselves. Therefore, we will do a lot of practicals among ourselves. <coughs> it's an art. But there is a science too. We know a lot about physio. And we have to study anatomy, physiology, pathology. We have to know the disease to understand how we shall do that physio. So there is science we have to study. We have to learn in the book about the disease. But it cannot be only science. If you read book, that doesn't mean you can work on the patient. But you have to know from the science as well. So therefore I say it's art and science. So we have to learn to do it practically and we have to learn through the books. To help a patient, that means we just help a patient, by physical means. We are using physical means. We are not using chemical means like drugs, okay? tablets or injections. No, we are using our hand, we are using massage, we are using exercise, we are using maybe steam inhalation, a warm pack, a cold pack, uh, many of these things, maybe a red light, red lamp to warm up the body. These are physical means, not chemical means. So we are working with physical means and normal. we are not working in a bloody way. That means we are not injecting. We are not in contact really with blood in physio. We are not giving to eat something to the patient. We work on the body, on the surface of the body. We work with the movements, with the joints. We go with the hands into the body, but just by touching it. When we work on the belly, there is a, we call it the abdominal massage. We really go into it and I'm touching the liver, the, the gallbladder, the stomach and go to the kidney and go to the intestine, the long intestine, the short intestine. I'm moving in that belly. We go like this into the body, but not by a needle, an injection or by giving something to swallow a, a medicine. So that means physical means. It's not by 
medicine like a drug. Is that understandable? So we can say physio is the art and science of helping a patient with physical means. Therefore we call it physiotherapy or sometimes you call it physical therapy. In America we say physical Ameri uh, therapy. It's the American way to say it. Here in Lesotho we say it, it's physiotherapy or just people say physio. In Sesotho translated we can say it's Naken Emasa Polymesifa. And I think it's a very good way to define it. We are working a lot with the bones and with the tissue. Tissue means muscles, skin, ligaments, tendons, bursa, joint capsule, but tissue means even the organ, the intestines. We work like this. You have seen on that notepad that is written on top, so when we give prescription to the patient, we write it on that notepad. So we tell them maybe, do this exercise five times a day, do hot, a hot bath with a quena and pefu mixture, or rub in this lengana ointment twice a day. So we are writing it on that piece of paper to give them that they can remember. So physio is the art and science of helping a patient with physical means. Now, how does a physiotherapist uniform look like? How do you understand in the hospital, oh, this is the physiotherapist. They have blue trousers, blue dark trousers, as I have, dark even sometimes they are ne nearly black, and then they have a white top. And that white top normally is going down here. And when it is cold in winter, so we are wearing maybe something blue on top, just a jumper or something to have more warm. And then they have flat shoes. Physios are not wearing high heel shoes. They are wearing flat shoes, sport shoes, tennis shoes, flat shoes. You can imagine why when we are working with a disabled person, maybe a hemiplegic person, you have to walk with that and that, maybe he's big, and that and that is not balanced well, and you have to hold him. If you are on a high hill, you will fall with that and that. You won't be able to hold him nicely. Sometimes we have to run, or yeah, you have to be stable. Therefore, the physio has no high heel shoes. I even personally cannot understand how nurses can work with high heel shoes. When they have to run because there is emergency, how can they run with that? How can they hold the patient when there is falling? I don't know. But in physio, no high heel shoes, flat shoes. Good shoes that we can support. Then we have trousers, even Bonme. Today it's no problem anymore. Bonme can wear trousers, it's no matata. But 20 years ago, it was a problem. <coughs> They said, hey, long, no, we cannot have trousers. But why shall physios wear trousers? The answer is very simple. Very often we do exercise on the floor with paralyzed people, with the disabled children. We are exercising or with the, the prenatal mothers. We are exercising on the floor, doing exercise, leg up, leg down, leg to the side, swinging here and there. So, you are very comfortable in trousers. In a dress, you won't do that. Especially with children, you're even rolling on the floor and playing with them. So in trousers, we are comfortable. So for our uniform to work nicely, effectively, comfortably, we have blue trousers, and they are not, not too, too narrow. We have the white top, and then we have the flat shoes. And we have a physio bag as well. In this bag, normally, we have all this material which we need on the bedside. Stethoscope, measure tape, notepad with a pen, some ointment, lingana ointment, or rosemary ointment, or we have the blacum oil for massaging. You will know it, I will show you. Uh, then we have maybe a mirror for people with 
facial paralysis, so they have to see how to do the exercise. We give them the, the mirror, show the mirror. There is our mask, when we have to have a mask, there are the gloves, you know, all that thing. As we move from one world to another, we have to move our material with us. So therefore we have a bag with us. Now, when we are working in special situations, let's say TB ward, or we are working with HIV patient, then we are wearing the apron, as the nurses, as everybody does. Okay? We have the mask and we have the gloves. Now, in our days, we are used to work all the time with gloves. I think you are used in the hospital too. Okay? Yeah. Is it a rule now that you are always working with gloves? In some hospital, I could see there is a rule. Everything is done with gloves. So, Fisi is working a lot with gloves, yes, because we're touching the person. So, for hygienic reason, we do it. But originally, we were not really using gloves. Very rarely, when there were wounds or things like this, of course. But uh, normally, massage on the skin, if there is no um, scratch or something, we did it without gloves. So, anyway, today, for hygienic reason, in that situation of HIV, TB, when it is necessary, we just take these precautions that we are wearing the apron, we're wearing the gloves, we're wearing the mask with us, just to prevent to be um, infected by something. What we can say, studies show that when physiotherapists are looking to, to these hygiene measures, very, very, very rarely a physio is infected by something. It's very rarely. So we have to know that even if we are sometimes afraid, but we have to be clear and precise in our hygienic measurements. We have to be clear and do it regularly, so then we don't have to be afraid. But you can understand sometimes our TB patients, we teach them to cough, so they are not perfect in coughing, sometimes they don't put the hand, or they just cough like this, and we are in front of them or so, something like this. You know it from nursing. Uh, we have to be careful, we have to learn to have a proper and good regular hygiene. But if we do that, the chance to be infected, even working so close with the patient, is really little, 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 little. In 35 years, working in, in many, many, even difficult uh, situations, I got infected only once with a hepatitis type A. The patient had this, this hepatitis and I got it. But you can imagine in 35 years how many patients I was treating. Thousands. So it's fine. We are fine. So the physio uniform, white top, blue trousers, flat shoes. And the back, and if it is necessary in winter, we have some blue coat for the top. We are using apron and gloves and mask when it is necessary to use them. Now, let's talk about how do I become a physiotherapist, a qualified physiotherapist? How do I become a physio assistant? Now, to become a qualified physiotherapist, and in Lesotho, there are maybe 12 or 13 of them. Imagine, 12 or 13 qualified physiotherapists. There are not many for the whole country. Two million people, many hospitals, and there are two, 12 or 13. Most of them are in Maseru. So they have undergone a study in the earlier years, in the 1980s, they went abroad to Cuba, to Germany, to study for three or four years physiotherapy. Now, in the later years, in 2000, they did a BSc at Roma University for two years, and then they went abroad to South Africa to be qualified as a physiotherapist in a uni university. So they came back after three years, and some of them try to do a master in physiotherapy now and specialize in something, sports physiotherapy or uh, children's physiotherapy, whatever. So you go and study that on the university and then you do some practical in hospitals and then, then you're ready to work. 
but only a few go this road. Then the physio assistant here in Lesotho, since I'm working here, they were always trained on the job. There is no official physio assistant training, let's say at NHTC or in some institution in Lesotho. It's always in-service training, on the job training. We did many in Paré, maybe 25, 30 were trained in Paré, four or five were trained in Quintu. So maybe there are 20, 25 acting physio assistants in whole Lesotho. And in the mountain hospital, like here, and then Mamohao, Mansunyane, Paré, Tebelong, they are all physio assistants we were trained on the job here in Lesotho. So, we are still pioneering. What I try to do since many years, and every time when I'm coming, I'm knocking on the door of Chao, and I try to knock on the Ministry of Health too, and now with the change of government, I'm hopeful that probably things can change. I would like that these on-the-job trained people can somehow upgrade and being recognized as physio assistants here in Lesotho. That means that they can work as physio assistants and they can be paid as physio assistants. I think all these people who work since 20 years and do a good job, they should be recognized and treated as that. So the, the stone is hard. So they are always saying, yes, we will do, we will do, but then nothing happens. But I am going on knocking that stone. And we hope one day will come and all these people can be recognized. On the other hand, I say, we cannot wait until the government, Minister of Health, is recognizing a physio assistant. Bef we cannot wait until there is a recognition before we start to teach them. We have to teach them on the job. We have to do workshops like this. We have to start today because Physiotherapy can help to prevent a lot of disability. So many people can walk again because they have physio. So many people can move their hands again when they were burned. Or so many people don't will have bed sources because they were moved. So many old people can walk, can move because they have less pain, we are treating them. So many HIV patients who were weak or have nasty pains, they have this polyneuropathy, pins and needles, nasty pain, and then they are not complying with the treatment because the side effects are so too much. They can be helped and they are more compliant to the treatment. So there are so many people who can be helped by physio. We shall help them today. We should not wait until physio is recognized and then we can start. Now, I'm, I don't want to blame anybody, but it's just a fact I'm coming 31 years to Lesotho. And they were saying, yes, next year we will recognize them. 31 years has passed. Hosasa never comes, we say, okay? So that next year never came. So that means, luckily we were teaching, luckily we were doing physiotherapy, because we helped many people. But I'm still being hopeful and now with the change of government maybe there is a new opportunity that we can arrive and to be recognized. So physio qualified physiotherapist is be trained abroad, there are only a few and most of the hospitals they have no qualified physiotherapist. Physio assistants is trained on the job here in the hospital, mainly at Paré, Summit and Quintu and most of the hospital are served by a physio assistant. On the end, isn't that great? That with a low training, we can help so many people. But we have to go on to develop and to recognize that physio assistant. Do you understand my point? Yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Until now, there is no association for physiotherapy in Lesotho. But Bombay, the qualified physiotherapy, they are thinking to do it. They are thinking 20 years already to do it. So I hope the year will come where they are stopped thinking to do it and they do it. Because 
if there is a professional body who is representing physio, we can do more. If there is no professional body, how can you represent yourself in the Ministry of Health? How can we have a, a proper mm. teaching at a National Health Training Center? So these things, but maybe now mm. time will be right that we can do that. So for you, it will be on the job training. We will go on do that every year now to build up this training that you are able to help the patient. But in the background, we try to prepare an upgrade workshop where by the end of the day, people can be recognized as physio assistants and paid as physio assistants. That we hope the future will, will give us the chance to do that. But we have to do physio even if it is not recognized because the people, they are here now and they need treatment now. And we give this type of treatment already 30 years and we help so many people. So therefore, we just go on. Now, what are the tools of physiotherapy? We were talking about the definition of physio, the uniform of physio, the training of physio. Now we are talking about the tools. How physios are working, what they are, they are using to work. So there are some categories of treatment we use, procedures. One of the most important tool is movement. Let's say, Moriana number one is movement. Movements and exercise. We work a lot with movements and exercise. Active movements, that means we do exercise. Assisted movements, we help the patient to move. Or passive movement, the patient cannot move and we move it. So movements, we do that individually with the patient, but we do as well movement classes. With TB patients, we are doing movement classes. Exercise, we will learn that in this week. So, me and, and Dati who works on TB work, you can do every day the TB class exercise, which helps them to become more flexible, to deepen the ventilation, to clear airways, and to get more body strength to be activated. A patient who moves regularly has more immune response. Do you know that? Regular movement increases immune response. Regular movement outside of the sun and fresh air, being in a good company, feeling, being member of a group, is increasing immune response. Therefore, it's so important that the depressed HIV person gets out of that corner in which he's sitting, being in a group, doing daily exercise, being part of a group, being socially connected to the people, doing active exercise and being in the sun and fresh air, it will improve his immune response. It's incredible when you do regularly these exercises, how people respond. It's the same for psychiatric problems. If you have people with depression, they heal better when they do twice a day half an hour of exercise in a group. They get much better. So movement is really a very potent medicine. Me? Is there regular movement improves what immune or immune response? response. Immune, you can say immune power, power of human system, immune response. We will talk about, about the detail effects, but I always underline that because we have so many diseases where immune response is needed. Like when you have TB, the body has to fight against TB. If you have HIV, the body has somehow to work against that virus to get better. So we are helping to build up the immune system. The immune system is destroyed with HIV and, and with TB, the immune system is very much suffering. Or with malnourished people, the immune system is suffering. So we have to build up immune response. And it's not only the ARV. They are very important, this medicine, of course. We cannot do it without. But 
Exercising helps a lot to HIV patients. When they are very weak, we give them gentle exercise. When they are already moderate, we do it a little bit more intensive. When they are quite good, we do a quite intensive physical training program with them. It helps them. So you see, movement is, is very helpful. Now, the second tool is massage. Massage means working with the tissue, with the flesh of the body. Massage means working with the soft tissue. Moving, stretching, squeezing the tissue. We have proper massage techniques. It's an art doing massage. We have massage for the muscles, for the skin, for the tendons, for the, the ligaments. We have massage for the organs, for the belly. We can do abdominal massage. We have many types of massage where we are working with the tissue. Massage can relax, can tonify. Massage can help to increase circulation. Massage can increase the temperature of the body. Many things you can do with massage. So that means treating by touching the person. Hands on physio is it. Have you ever had a massage treatment? Not really, huh? So you will be introduced to it. We will do massage on us and uh, you will experience it and you will do it. Then we have, we call it, these are water treatments, hydrotherapy. Water therapy. That means we are working with bath. Let's say a warm sitting bath. Maybe there was may, and that may had maybe an infection on the, the, the female parts. And she got the medicine, things become better, but there is still irritation and maybe inflammation. So we can teach to do the sitting bath with a herb, we call it sage, and a little bit salt, only a little bit salt. And then they're sitting in that warm, water covered with the blanket, sitting in that sitting, and it's a partial sitting bath, a warm sitting bath, and it will help a lot. Or maybe there is also with premenstrual pain, sharp pain, suffering. So we teach her a warm sitting bath to relax the pelvic muscle, the low back muscle, the pelvic floor muscle. Or the same bath we use as well when Bundate, they have prostatitis. So they get the medicine and we give them that sitting bath. Or another tool we are using, maybe somebody gets a flu or maybe has a chronic bronchitis. So we give them exercise to breathe, we do some percussion, uh, that the sputum comes out. But then we will tell as well, do a full body wash every day for a week or two. So in the evening, you take a handful of guena leaves and maybe a big spoon of pefu leaves. You boil them in hot water. And then you put a little bit of salt in it. And you put it in the bucket and you wash yourself with that very hot guena pefu water. Top down, you really wash you with that very hot water. Then you just dry a little bit, you put your pyjama on, even socks, you drink a cup of tea and you go to bed under the blankets. The body will be very warm, that patient will start to sweat, the immune system will give a strong, sharp response and that bronchitis will go on, will become better. Sometimes a chronic bronchitis needs a push. The body needs a push, hey, move yourself to heal that out. Maybe this healed out by 80%, but it's not going on. So we give a push. And we do it with that type of full body wash and creating warm heat in the body. And that will give a reaction. So this is by that stimulation of that full 
bath of that full body wash with these two herbs. You know all of them. Oh, you know these herbs, okay? Gwen and Pefu. You don't know. The mountains is very smelly after the rain. Now it's growing. Quena near the river. Quena is wild mint. And uh, Pefu is Eliochrysum. It's a very powerful plant. I will send you, you will have copies where these plants are nicely written. Where they are, how they are called, how do you harvest them, how do you dry them, and how do you use them. These are physio herbs. So, we teach as well in hydrotherapy the steam inhalation. Maybe you have somebody with chronic upper respiratory infection, maybe a little bit of asthma, so we gave them the physio, the nurse is giving the medicines, and then we teach them do steam inhalation or just boil in a cup of water, in, in a pot of water in the, in the house, eucalyptus leaves, blacum leaves. And you know, there are different plants, blacum plants. And there is one who has that little ball, many little balls. Did you see it? Most of the eucalyptus trees here, they don't have these balls, but some they have it. And those one with the balls is the healing plant. This is the medicinal eucalyptus. We call it eucalyptus globulus, that means eucalyptus with the little balls. This is the plant. We take the leaves and we cook it in the water and that steam helps to open up and to, to clear the airways. We can give this patient as well a bunch of these leaves. He puts it into the pillowcase and sleeps on them. So the whole night he will breathe it in and it will clear, disinfect the bronchies. Isn't that great? It's simple and works. So in hydrotherapy we are using some herbs to do applications like this. And what I like to do here in Lesotho, I'm using the traditional herbs, those ones people know. If you give maybe some that the Moholu from the mountains, Quena and Pefu, he knows exactly what it is and he will use it. If you give him a medicine which he maybe doesn't know either, he has no really relationship to it. And as we all know, people, they come to the hospital, but they want to have some connection to traditional medicine as well, to natural medicine. And before all the hospitals were here, who was providing cure, who was providing medicinal help? Traditional medicine. Okay, they were here before. Medicine. And they did a good job. Of course, they didn't have antibiotics. They didn't have all the medicine from today. Of course, development went on. But we cannot say it's something of the past. Knowing well the herbs, you can help a lot. So this type of recipe which we're using in hydrotherapy, we call it re natural remedies. We use it in a pharmaceutical controlled way. The problem of traditional medicine sometimes is somebody's a self-declared traditional healer. He wakes up on one day and he says, I'm a healer. And then he starts to do it. But he has no knowledge. He has no experience. He doesn't know. So then sometimes it's just some uh, fantasy. This is sometimes a problem. But we cannot say all of them are like this. Many of the old people, they really know the plants. So there is a lot of wisdom and experience. And that recipe of Quena and Pefu, it is an old traditional recipe. They found out it helps. When you get a flu, do that full body wash. You will be much better the next day. So if it helps to a flu, of course it is helpful to a TB patient as well. Always complementary not instead the medicines, the TB medicine or HIV medicines. We don't talk to reduce them. No, 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 no. They are there as they have to be there. But that full body wash can be just complementary help. Do you understand that? Yes. So physio is using that. 
bath and we're using cold baths as well if a joint is very hot and swollen we say put it in the evening in the bucket of cold water or um, sometimes when the patient with varicosis so they have these big veins on the leg in summer swollen legs and the big veins we say elevate this leg at lunch in the evening and then do a special massage and then just make a cold shower of this leg. Cold water is stimulating the veins. So let's use that. We do it. So water treatment we can do with many things. So we have the third tool now. The first is movement, the second is massage, and the third is water application, hydrotherapy. Now the next one is splinting. We use splints in physio. Splints means they are objects to fix a joint. You all have seen splints, okay? Mm -hmm. We have splints for every kind of joints. Maybe a back slap for, for the knee, when the, the knee is not stable enough, or maybe for the hand, we prepare splints. I prepared now a splint in Paray for a, a boy who is 11 years now. He has a cerebral palsy, so he's born with the hand floppy. So by the time that hand wants to go in this position, deformation. So I said, no, give him a night splint. At night, when that boy sleeps, he puts a splint on. So now the hand is straight. It's no longer like this. If we wouldn't give him that night splint, the hand would be fixed like this. Or sometimes you have somebody with a burn. So during this rehabilitation of the burn, the hand would close like this. So when it was well nursed, everything, we did the, the movements, we do the bandage, and then we give a splint so that that hand remains open. Otherwise, it becomes like this, the tissue will shorten, get a contracture, and then they cannot extend anymore. So we give a splint to keep it open. This is splinting. We are using the special splint material, and today we have very simple material. You can put it into hot water, then it becomes soft, so you can just make it smooth to the need of the body. And then when it is cool again, it's hard. So you just can move and adapt it, model to the body. You have seen all splints, isn't it? Okay. Then there is another tool. We have crutches, wheelchairs, walking aids. We need some tools to help to be mobile to the patient. So we give exercises and, and teaching how to walk with crutches. Or let's say a paraplegic patient who is paralyzed on the leg needs wheelchair training. They need a driver's license for a wheelchair. You know, it's not easy to drive a wheelchair. It looks easy, but it's not easy. If you go and sit into a wheelchair, just driving straight is not easy. Driving down, driving up, or maybe if there is a step, go up the step without losing balance in the wheelchair. has to be learned. So physio teaches the paralyzed wheelchair skills, driving skills for wheelchair. Or how to walk with crutches. Let's say doctor says this patient should not put all the weight on the foot. So partial weight bearing means not putting the whole body weight on the foot while walking. So it needs a special technique to walk with the crutches. If there should be no weight bearing, the foot should not be put on the soil. So it's another technique how to walk. Or walking with crutches, steps up, step down, has to be learned. So we are working with crutches, wheelchair, walking aids, and <coughs> we teach that to the patient so that the patient is able to use them safely and can become mobile. <laughs> It's very important that disabled people or people who are weak, that they somehow are mobile. There is no way to lie for a long time in the bed. Prolonged bed rest should be avoided wherever possible. So a paraplegic patient or a hemiplegic patient, after a few days, we put them into the wheelchair. Go out to the veranda, to the corridor, that you can see people. Leave the bed. Because... The bed is dangerous. You all know 
bed sources, thrombosis, mm. pneumonia. The bed is dangerous. It's a comfortable place, the bed, but the bed is dangerous. So we have to leave the bed as soon as possible. Therefore, we are using wheelchairs and walking aids and so on, that people can be mobile. This is a very important tool that we are using. And then the last tool, but I just mentioned it a bit, this is a technical physiotherapy. That means machines. Today, in physiotherapy, it's somehow trendy to use machines. We use them already many years. But there is an illusion. People think when you put a machine, it will be better as when you do exercise or when you work with the hand. With 35 years of experience, I can tell you, this is the illusion. It's not true. Maybe 10% of the benefit from physio will come by a machine. 90% is coming through you and the activity of the patient. So electrotherapy, ultrasound, all these things, these are nice machines, but it's high-tech applications and they are not relevant in physiotherapy. They are really not relevant. You know, today some physiotherapists, they are commercially organized. They are maybe sitting in their private practice in Maseru. So they like to have many machines so they can treat five pondate to the same time. That means you, fi you earn five times more. You understand? So this is commercially motivated. But this is not a sincere help to the patient. We are here to help to the patient. We are not here to, to make money with the patient. Of course we shall be paid. But the first aim is that we help. So there is no way to give 10 maybe electrotherapy sessions to a patient and you could help him maybe in two sessions he would be cured and you give him first 10 electrotherapy so that you get that money, 10 times 50 rand. It's not sincere to the patient. But in commercialized physiotherapy, unfortunately, it's very practiced and used. So therefore, the technical physiotherapy, the machines, they are not so helpful as people think they help. And it's always risky. Maybe there is lightning, then they are damaged, and then it takes a long time until you, they are repaired. Then with this type of technology, you can even burn the patient. If you are not careful, if you don't know really how to use them, you burn the patient. You can damage the patient. So as the result is not so important due to this machine, as they are easily to be disturbed, these machines, and the effect is not so good, so it's not necessary really to use them. So in resource-limited setting, like our hospital here, or Pare or whatever, in the health center or the village, we are even not talking about technical physiotherapy. It's, it's not relevant, but it's there. Here in Ceboche, two, three of these machines are there too, because on that day, Marcel, a doctor brought it, but uh, I don't think that they are very much used in there. It's not so helpful. Do you get the point I have with the machines? Yes. Okay. I like a physio which is wonderful suitable. That means wherever you are, you can do it effectively, in a cheap way, but with reliable. And I like a physio which I can teach to a village health worker that they can do it in home-based care. Or when we are on the health center, maybe there is the nurse assistant that can teach her how to do it. I like this type of physio, which is to access for all, for everybody. The technical physiotherapy is access to who has money and is not helping really. So there is no need to bring the machine in somewhere in the health center. Mm -mm. So access to all, we shall help everybody and make it easy to people to have access to our physio. So these are the tools, let's repeat, movement, massage and other manual treatments, hydrotherapy, splinting, walking aches, crutches and wheelchairs, and then the sixth one, which I abandon, is the technical physiotherapy with machines. This is what we mainly are using in physiotherapy. 
So I can say these are natural mm. resources, things which are given by nature. And they're human resources. These are things which we have. We learn it and then we are able to do. Therefore, with my physio bag, I can go wherever I want and I'm ready to do physio. So I went to Tlokwen near Bobete, Tapajubedo. It's a far off remote village to see friends there. And always when I go and visit them, uh, people come. I saw in two days more than 55 patients. Poor people up there, you know Tlokwen is on the other side of Motiba Motsu. It's really a far off place. So many people we could help and give them the exercise. You can do like this, you can do like this, you can use this herb to help with your asthma. Somewhere to say you have to go to the doctor. But most of them we could help with our physio means and we were teaching them how to do. So physio works with the treatment. I give to my patient the treatment. But I'm teaching as well to self-treatment. Every patient learns how to help themselves with exercise. Sometimes when people are from far, they cannot come to physio. So I'm teaching family members how to do. The mothers of disabled children, we teach them how to help the child. And then maybe once a month they come for physio. Because they are too far away. Or in home-based care, we teach the village health worker how to do it. Sometimes when somebody is from far, let's say the boys when they're falling from the donkey and they break the elbow, elbow very stiff after PRP, you really have to work there twice a day for a week or two and then that elbow more or less will be stretched. If you don't do that, that elbow will remain the same. So in these cases, and they are coming from far, then I say, come, stay in the hospital. We do hospitalized physiotherapy. We say, come, stay in the hospital as a lodger and we do the physio twice a day. Or maybe they have relatives near the hospital and say, come, stay with your Nkhonu and we will treat you every day twice. You need intensive physio now because if we postpone it in a few months, that elbow will be so stiff that we can't do it anymore. And if you are an adult man with an elbow like this or an elbow like this, there is a big difference, eh? How can you work if you cannot extend your elbow? It will be difficult. So it's important we are reacting then, and then we say, come to the hospital. So physio is done individually. It can be done in the hospital. It can be done in the OPD. Then it can be done maybe in the health center or in the village level. It can be done by the physio assistant himself or by a family member or the village health worker. Physio can be done through OPD, people are coming from outside, but if they are too far, we say, come, stay with us for two weeks and we will do it. So in all the cases, we have to see how much physio they need and how we can organize it. And so we, we organize it. Is that understandable? Yes. Okay. Now, to end up this introduction, just uh, let you say in which world we are always working or in which places. Physio works male ward, female ward, children's ward. Physio works in TB unit. TB physio is a very important part of physio. TB uh, physio works for OPD patients and ART patients. They're coming from ART service. A few years ago, now luckily it starts to change, but a few years ago we were concentrated on ART of the medicines. There was no medicine for HIV patients, so the most important thing was that we get access to the medicines. Now the medicines are there, aren't they? Everybody who wants to have ARVs can get them. It's no longer a problem. So, we have to think as well of the other problems which an HIV patient can have. Many of these patients have polyneuropathy, pins and needles, ugly sensation in the feet, or swelling due to the drugs, polyneuropathy. In these cases, you can help with physio. We do it and we teach them how to do and they feel better. Some of them have respiratory problems. We give them respiratory physio. 
Some of them are weak. We give them a training program, power exercise, to build up strength in the body. Some are paralyzed. So we do neurological physiotherapy. We help them to move again. So you see, uh, there are many indications for <coughs> HIV patients under treatment today. Therefore, physio shall work with the ART unit. Then physio can work on health centers. It's not very much developed now, but I hope in the future we can do more of that. And physio can work on the community level. Let's say paralyzed people we visit at home. We go to the village and we help them at home. We organize it at home for the disabled children, the same. Or maybe bed rest patient, HIV or TB at home. We, we visit them and we organize with the village health worker that physio in the home-based care. You see, physio is something very big. Sometimes people think physio is only for the paralyzed. Uh -uh. Now to end up, we can say physio is used for prevention. In the hospital we do a lot of preventive physio. So bed rest patients, you go and turn and move them. That they have no bed rest complication. There is curative physio. We cure, we help to heal with physio. And then there is the third type of physio, less known, palliative. Palliative, P-A-L, palliative physio. This is the physio for people who are in the process to die soon, in the terminally ill people. Maybe HIV patient, maybe cancer patient, maybe old patient, maybe TB patient. People who are in their last days or last weeks of life, suffering, and there we do physio, not to cure them, because they are on the way to pass away, they are on the end of their life, but that they can bear better the suffering, to ease the suffering. So sometimes we move them, sometimes we take off the swelling by a edema treatment, sometimes we clear them the lung with percussion. We do very gentle treatment, to ease the suffering, that the suffering is more bearable, to have a little bit more quality of life in that process to die. This is palliative physio. There is even palliative medicine. Today we have many drugs to ease of pain in these situations and so on. This is palliative physio. Sometimes the nurse says, why are you treating the patient? He's going to die. Then I said, yes, we know, he won't be cured, he won't stand up anymore, but these few days he's still alive, he will be a little bit more comfortable. The suffering will be a little bit less. This is already enough motivation to help this person. Do you understand? So therefore we do that. We know that the patient won't stand up anymore. But if somebody is in the process to die, that doesn't mean we have to disconnect to that person. We have to give up. No, we do what that person needs. We help them that they are comfortable, that they are less afraid, that they don't feel lonely, that they are not so much in pain, that they are less, they are more comfortable in this very last day and moment. It's just something very human we do. That's fine. And physio works always in the team, together with nurses and the doctor, isn't it? So a, a success in physio is always a success of the team, I say. When we work nicely together, then we were successful. Hulukili, that's the first overview. What is physio? How a physio looks like, how they are trained, which tool they are using, where they are working, and three main types of physio, preventive physio, curative physio, and palliative physiotherapy. I guess you cannot see now, you can understand, physio is really a big topic. It is something which is very developed. And now we start to learn the basics, the A, B, C of applying physio skills, being a ward attendant or nurse assistant in the hospital.